Hey, what's up guys? This is part 2 of my bar exam pointers in civil law. For this video, I will discuss the outline on marriage and property relations in the 2023 civil law bar exam syllabus. So, napanood nyo ba ang part 1 on persons? If not, you can still watch it by clicking the link above or the link in the description box below. By the way, thank you to all who watched it. You're very much welcome. And as promised, I will be completing the outline in the civil law syllabus. Kaya huwag na natin patagalin dahil mahaba itong outline na to. Let's begin. Tulad na sinabi ko, mahaba ang outline ng marriage and family relations. It almost covers the entire family code. Almost lang. Dahil for adoption, the law is now Republic Act 11642. Hindi na ang family code, not even Republic Act 8552. Anyway, dear bar chair, nilista nyo pa talaga. No? Sana sinabi nyo na lang na buong family code. Nakatipid pa sana sa ink at papel. Joke lang po. Love you, Jess. Fernando. <laughs> Anyway, handa na ba kayo? Ilabas na ang family code, highlighter, lapis at ball pen. Let's look at the outline on marriage and family relations. First, on the general principles, begin with Article 1 of the family code. This gives you the definition of marriage and everything you need to remember like it is a special contract, it is a permanent union, only a man and a woman can be married, etc. For the essential and formal requisites naman, remember Articles 2 and 3 of the Family Code. Now remember that a mere defect in any of these requisites will not invalidate the marriage. But the absence of any of these requisites will render the marriage void ab initio. That's according to Articles 4 and 35.2 of the Family Code. So markahan nyo rin yan. Next, on Mixed Marriages and Foreign Divorce. Remember Article 26 of the Family Code and of course, Republic versus Manalo which recognize a divorce obtained abroad by a Filipino married to a foreigner provided that the national law of the foreigner spouse recognizes divorce and capacitates said foreigner spouse to remarry. Pero teka lang, tinanong na ang Manalo case noong 2019, the Bernabar. 2020-2021, the best bar ever under Justice Leone, and last year, Kagiwa Bar. Tatanungin pa ba kaya ulit ito this year? Ano ba? Umay na be? Sana iba naman? Anyway, at least alam nyo yun, ha? Republic versus Manalo. Itong kasunod, baka itanong this year. Nasa syllabus kasi. Ito ang Tan Andal versus Andal. What you should emphasize and remember in this case is the pronouncement of the Supreme Court that... Psychological incapacity consists of clear acts of dysfunctionality that show a lack of understanding and concomitant compliance with one's essential marital obligations due to psychic causes. It is not a medical illness that has to be medically or clinically identified. Hence, expert opinion is not required. Siyempre, depende pa din sa sitwasyon na ibibigay. Although Tan Andal versus Andal was celebrated as a once in a blue moon case because it granted very rarely a petition for nullity of marriage on the ground of psychological incapacity, it did not, however, change the requisites, namely gravity, incurability, and juridical antecedents. So make sure that all these requisites are present in the problem before ruling in favor of the petition and citing Tan Andal versus Andal. Okay, aside from that, don't forget that the, or don't forget the other void marriages under Articles 35, 37, and 38 of the Family Code. Marami yan, pero self-explanatory yan. Memorize nyo na lang. Okay, now to the voidable marriages, please remember Articles 45 and 46 of the Family Code. It enumerates all the marriages that can be annulled, including what is the meaning of fraud no, in marriage. Common denominator is my vitiation of consent. Same lang sa Article 1390 of the Civil Code on voidable contracts. But remember the difference. For ordinary contracts, the action for annulment must be filed within four years from the time the ground arises. While for voidable marriages, the action for annulment must be filed within 
five years from the time the ground arises, except when the ground is lack of parental consent and insanity. For lack of parental consent, the action should be filed before the affected spouse or the injured spouse reaches the age of 21. For insanity, the action should be filed during lucid interval or after regaining sanity or before the death of either party. Okay, now as to the effects of defective marriages, take note of Article 50 in relation to Articles 43 and 44 of the Family Code. Isa isahin natin. First, as to the marriage bond, it is terminated and the parties are capacitated to remarry. Second, the absolute community or conjugal partnership of gains shall be dissolved and liquidated. Next, donations by reason of marriage done shall remain valid unless the marriage was contracted in bad faith. Next, the innocent spouse may revoke the designation of the other spouse who acted in bad faith as beneficiary in any insurance policy. And next, the presumptive legitimes of the children shall be delivered to them. As to the custody and parental authority of the minor children, the applicable law on custody and parental authority under the family code shall apply. Kaya kung less than 7 years old pa ang bata, dun kay mami yan. Now lastly, as to the status of the children of these marriages, take note of Article 54 of the Family Code. Children conceived or born before the judgment of annulment, Article 45, or absolute nullity of marriage due to psychological incapacity, Article 36, or of a subsequent marriage which did not comply with the required partition, delivery of presumptive legitimes, and recording thereof in the proper offices, Article 53, these children shall be considered legitimate. Now, question, paano yung mga children of those other void marriages under Article 35, 37, and 38 of the Family Code? such as incestuous marriages, bigamous marriages, and marriages against public policy. Well, they shall be considered illegitimate. This is because of Article 165 of the Family Code, which provides that children conceived and born outside a valid marriage are illegitimate, unless otherwise provided in the Code. So the general rule is that children conceived or born to void marriages are illegitimate except those born to defective marriages under Articles 36, 45, and 53 of the Family Code. Please, pakitandaan niya na, mamaya baka magkamali kayo, i-generalize niyo yung mga children. Alright. Next, in the outline are uh, foreign marriages. Now, hindi ako sure dito, foreign marriage ba dahil celebrated abroad? Or foreign marriage dito sa Pilipinas dahil foreigner ang either or both spouses. Well, if foreign marriage dahil celebrated abroad, then apply Article 17 of the Civil Code regarding the formalities and solemnities. Thus, a marriage validly celebrated abroad shall be considered valid here in the Philippines. However, as to the capacity of the parties to marry, apply Article 15 of the Civil Code, the National Law of the Parties. Thus, if by their national law, the parties are qualified to marry, then the marriage is valid wherever it may have been celebrated. Now to the second situation, kung the marriage was celebrated here in the Philippines, but either or both spouses are foreigners, still apply Articles 17 and 15 of the Civil Code, but in addition, apply Article 21 of the Family Code, which provides that, when either or both of the contracting parties are citizens of a foreign country, it shall be necessary for them before a marriage license can be obtained to submit a certificate of legal capacity to contract marriage issued by their respective diplomatic or consular officials. Okay, now on to legal separation. Remember Article 55, Family Code for the Grounds? Article 56, Family Code for the Defenses, and Articles 57, 58, 59, and 60 of the Family Code for the Procedural Matters. As to the effects of the filing of a petition for legal separation and of a decree of legal separation, please remember Articles 61, 62, 63, and 64 of the Family Code. Para madaling matandaan, 
the effects are the same for annulment or nullity of marriage. Except, number one, the marriage bond remains, and number two, Two, there is no need to deliver the presumptive legitimes of the children. Alright. Now, what if the spouses reconcile after the decree of legal separation? Well, take note of Articles 65, 66, and 67 of the Family Code. Take note that ang hindi mababago bunsud ng reconciliation ay ang liquidation ng property regime and for feature of shares ng guilty spouse unless the parties agree to revive their former property regime and the court approves it. Alright. Ngayon naman ay pag-usapan natin ang property relations. For the nation's propter nuptias or by reason of marriage, take note of Article 82 of the Family Code for the definition. Kasama dyan ang mga regalo before, on the date of, or after the wedding. The rules on ordinary donations under the civil code will apply. Kaya apply the formal requirements or requisites like the need for a public instrument and acceptance and the limitation against inofficious donations. Now, if the future spouses will be donating to one another, remember Article 84 of the Family Code. Alamin muna kung ano ang napagkasundo ang property regime. If absolute community of property, pwede silang mag-donate to each other. Kung ibang property regime like conjugal partnership or separation of property, they cannot donate more than one-fifth of their present property to each other. Ayan, so I hope na intindihan nyo yan ha? Okay, now speaking of donations made by the spouses, take note of Articles 98 and 125 of the Family Code which provide that neither spouse may donate any community property or conjugal partnership property without the consent of the other. However, either spouse may, without the consent of the other, make moderate donations from the community property or conjugal partnership for charity or on occasions of family rejoicing or family distress. So, void ang donation na isang spouse kung walang consent ang other spouse, generally. Or, kung, may cons- kung kahit walang consent ang other spouse, pero hindi naman ito moderate at hindi ito for charity or family-related purposes. Ayan. Okay. Now, punta na tayo sa property regimes. Ayan. Favorite nyo ata ito eh, no? Favorite din ni Justice kasi lahat talaga na just outline. Note that hindi kasama sa outline ang marriage settlement. Pero wag nyo isipin na hindi maari isama sa exam ang marriage settlement. The marriage settlement, after all, is the contract between the parties that contain their choice of property regime in lieu of the default property regime, which is the community property, community absolute community of property. Kaya to be valid, remember the requisites of a marriage settlement under Articles 75. 76 and 77 of the family code. I will leave that to you. Okay? Now, to the property regimes proper. Una, pag-usapan natin ang absolute community of property. Remember Article 91 of the family code for what is included. Article 92 of the family code for what is excluded. And Article 94 of the family code for the charges and obligations of the absolute community. Second, for the conjugal partnership of gains, remember Articles 106 and 117 of the Family Code for what is included, Article 109 of the Family Code for what is excluded, and Article 121 of the Family Code for the charges and obligations of the conjugal partnership. Now, for the administration and disposition of both community property and conjugal partnership of gains, the rules are the same. See Articles 96 and 124 of the Family Code. Here, the administration is joint. In case of disagreement, the husband's decision shall prevail, subject to the right, of course, of the wife to go to the court to challenge that. In case of incapacity or absence of one spouse, the other spouse shall assume the power of administration. Lastly, any disposition or encumbrance without the consent of the other spouse shall be void subject to the ratification by the other spouse 
or approval by the court. Attorney Al, ano po ang characterization na isang sale or alienation without the consent of the other spouse? Is it void or voidable? Good question! In the case of Queno versus Bautista, March 2, 2021, the Supreme Court acknowledged the confusion kasi may ibang mga decisions ang Supreme Court where the Supreme Court characterized the sale or alienation as void. Pero meron din namang ibang decisions na sinabing voidable lamang ito. In that case, the Supreme Court held that the sale of conjugal property without the consent of the wife is merely voidable. In that case, the marriage of the spouses and the alienations of their conjugal property transpired before the effectivity of the family code. However, as clarified in Alexander v. Escalona, July 19, 2022, according to the court, the transaction is void if the alienation of the conjugal property transpired after the effectivity of the family code and this rule applies even if the spouses were married under the civil code. So there, when characterizing the sale or alienation without the consent of the other spouse, check from the facts first kung kailan ang transaction. Was it before or after the family code became effective on August 3, 1988? Ayan, so remember the date. Alright, now to the separation of property regime. Take note of Articles 134, 135, and 136 of the Family Code on when a separation of property may take place. As to what properties are deemed owned separately, see Article 144 of the Family Code. As to the administration of their separate properties, see Article 145 of the Family Code. Now, as to the charges and obligations, see Article 146 of the Family Code. Check nyo na lang yan ha, mga cause of law at i-memorize ninyo yan. Okay, now on to the property regime of unions without marriage. See, articles, well, see Article 147 of the Family Code if the common spouses are living together without legal impediment. Ibig sabihin, mga binata at dalaga sila, no? So, they could marry but they chose not to get married so nag in lang sila. So, yun. Take note of Article 147 of the Family Code as to them. Now, co-ownership with equal shares shall govern. However, if the common spouses are living together but with a legal impediment such as one of them or both of them are already married, apply Article 148 of the Family Code. And here, the shares shall be based on actual contribution. In the absence of proof of actual contribution, it shall be presumed to be equal. Note, however, the second paragraph which provides for the forfeiture of the shares of the party who is married or even though not married but acted in bad faith. Alright, last in the outline on property relations, judicial separation of property. Dapat kasama na ito dun sa previous item on separation of property regime. But anyway, see Article 135 of the Family Code for the grounds, Articles 136, 137, and 139 of the Family Code for the procedural matters, and Article 141 of the Family Code for the revival of the previous property regime, whether it was community of property or conjugal partnership of gain. Okay, mga House of Law and Bar Examinees, mahaba na ito. So, yun na muna ang mga pointers ko for the topic of marriage and property relations under the Civil Law Bar Exam. May kasunod pa ito ha, particularly about the family and children. Kaya abangan, I'll be back very very soon. Please share this video to your friends. Libre lang naman po ito. As always, please, please press like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I'll see you in the next video. Laging tatandaan, isip ay buksan, alamin ng batas. Bye guys!